Good morning everyone, and I'm Sam if you did not know, and today I was talk talking in with my friends and talking about ways that we could kind of customize our masks to be personal, because of course everyone has to wear them now, and I kind of like to do my own thing. So, one of the ways you could do that is make a mask holder, and the way this works is there are beads all around, and then you can put it around yourself, kind of like a necklace, and it holds your mask down there. When you put your mask back on, it just dangles in front of you, and it's something to keep your mask on you at all times, because if you're like me, you tend to forget where you put things, so now I can't forget it because it's right here with me, and I thought one thing we could do is kind of just show you how to make one of these. So I have some kind of thin string, and you can use any string. Even yarn works fine as long as your beads are big enough, and it actually helps a lot because it's, it's stiffer, so it's not sliding everywhere you go. The beads kind of stay in place. So with this string, I double knotted it with, with a lot of tail at the end because we're going to use this, this once we're done with everything. And I just took some of my pony beads and I have some funky fuzzy beads here that I thought would look interesting with it. And I just went with a pattern and all the way through. As you see, it's a fuzzy pink bead. bead. Where'd you get those fuzzy pom-pom beads? I got them at the craft store. Or, um... So you can get them, you don't have to buy them online. You don't have to buy them online. These ones were at Hobby Lobby. Uh -huh. I think there were some at Michael's. I couldn't tell you on top of my head. I got these frosted pony beads at Michael's though. So they're not quite like the shiny ones you usually see. They're kind of matte. And I think they look nice. I like those better. Because they're not like the super plastic-y look. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like... You, you I really like them. these. And they are soft to touch, so... They're pom-poms with a hole in the middle. And that's what they look like right there. And they're okay. fuzzy all the way around. Except the one place where you put the string in. And you just keep going with the pattern. And then when you're done, you can tie off this end a lot. Um, as long as you keep a long tail. And you can, you can take the tails of them. You can tie them to the clips and clip them on your mask. Or you can tie them directly to your mask, which is what I did with this one here. And I didn't cut the little strings just in case I want to untie it and put it on a different mask. Or, or I can just kind of tuck them in and that's fine. But it kind of helps me remembering my mask. Mask it makes it look unique. I did get a couple compliments on them yesterday. So if you want to, you know, spruce up your mask, that's one way to do it. Another way is you've probably seen this trend going around if maybe you've looked on social media where instead of tie-dyeing things this year, everyone was reverse tie-dyeing things. So just taking some like, you know, laundry bleach or like a bleach pen and then putting it all over your mask and it creates an effect where, you know, it whitens the parts that you put the bleach on like bleach is supposed to and it leaves this kind of reverse tie-dye look. Or if you like the traditional tie-dye look, you could just get some tie-dye. I've seen them everywhere this year. That was a big thing this summer. And you could just tie-dye your mask. I'm not going to do it this one because I do like this plain green mask. <laughs> this is probably one of my favorite masks just because I like the color. Um, and since, since, you know, everyone has to wear their mask this holiday and we have Thanksgiving coming next week. Some of the ways that you can keep safe is, of course, wearing your mask while you're out, while you're with family. Yeah, I know it's a little hard because you want to be able to hear each other, but it, it helps by keeping everyone safe. Or you can keep six feet apart, and it should be in a well-ventilated room. Because the less ventilation you have in the room, the, the chances of you getting COVID are higher. I think they said that like for every 15 minutes, the percentage goes up, which was really surprising. Things. And of course, you're, you're going to go see your family, or maybe you're with your direct family. You still should avoid giving hugs and direct contact. Maybe have one person serving the food so you're all not sharing the serving utensils. Another way is, sadly, you're not supposed to pet any pets because, of course, pets can get it and transmit it. Or if you're all touching the same pet, you're all spreading the same germs. That one did make me a little sad, but I understand it. Um, if everyone can have hand sanitizer or when you're in the bathroom to have single-use paper towels instead of a hand towel, because, you know, you're all touching it again, even though you did just wash your hands. Okay, what about, since I want to save the trees, what about having a stack of washcloths? And everybody use one washcloth and put it in the hamper. And that works, too, as okay. long as it's just kind of single use. Okay. As long as you have a 
plentiful of those things. Because I do understand people that don't want to use the entire rainforest when using paper <laughs> towels. I understand that completely. Um, and, and, of course, if you're going out of town, be safe. If you're showing any symptoms or your host is showing any symptoms, it's probably better to stay home. Um, if you are hosting, maybe you want to ask everyone and how they're feeling the next couple of days or the week ahead, just so everyone is prepared because we all don't want to go back into quarantine. We all want to be safe and make sure our family is safe all together. What if we eat outside? Eating outside is actually preferred because um, obviously it's the greatest ventilation you can get. They still ask that your group stays small and kind of distance from each other. But eating outside is considered the best. If you're going to eat inside, they ask that you have several different types of ventilations, whether you can have like a heater or a um, fan running through or open the windows. It will get a little chilly, but maybe the, your family can have a fire or if you're outside, you can have a bonfire that way. So just kind of a little twist on, you know, your traditional well, Thanksgiving dinner. And that's some of just the guidelines that, that they suggest. And... You should all wear your mask and show your funky mask holders. Or if you spruced up your mask in any other way. I do have some, like, gems here, too. I forgot to show those. You can glue them on your mask and be the sparkliest person at Thanksgiving if you wanted to be. I know my little cousin would love this. She loves <laughs> anything pink, anything sparkly. And honestly, I understand. It's very pretty. And she's so fun to be around. So, well, that's just some ways that, that hopefully you guys can stay safe and stay fashionable for this this holiday season. So thank you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.